Hello, everyone. I am uh, Claudio Murgan, the host of the Spiritual Inspired Podcast. Please uh, subscribe to uh, the channel, share this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, watch it. My guest today is uh, Sarah Starr. Sarah is a starseed from the Pleiades star system and an ambassador for the Galactic Federation. She's an intuitive psychic and emotional empath who has several psychic gifts ranging from clairsentience, clairvoyance, clairempathy, claircognizance, and clairkinesia. Sarah channels galactic messages that help assist humanity in the preparation for important ascension events, such as the upcoming solar flash and open contact event with higher dimensional beings in their very near future. Sarah rediscovered her psychic abilities and divine purpose after enduring her dark night of the soul in 2019. Her mission is to guide and bring forth information that will help shift the consciousness of humanity into a fifth dimensional state of being by elevating minds and delivering the truth of our present and future realities. Sarah, thank you very much for, uh, for joining the show today. <clears throat> thank you for having me. I've been uh, watching your uh, Instagram posts and I got uh, inspired. And uh, in fact, my wife discovered you and she sent me your uh, link and I uh, said, yes, I have to interview her. Aww. And in a way, I consider my wife uh, recently my scout because she watches a lot of Instagram uh, personalities and then she forced them to me and uh, it is my job to contact them and interview them. Oh, I'm so glad that she found me. That's good because that means that She's also on the frequency that in receiving these types of messages. So yes. that's very important. <laughs> go yes, wife, it, go. It's fortunate that uh, we are both on the same uh, wavelength. That That's for sure. Yes. Yes. That is key. Honestly, that is key. Everybody vibing at the same uh, frequency, just because you, you can interpret these messages and understand them. Uh, and that, like I said, that's the most important thing. Yes, and I mentioned about uh, the dark night of the soul in 2019. So what exactly happened then? Uh, <laughs> um, it was, a, it's very complicated, of course. There are always, a dark night of the soul is very, very complicated. But it got to the point where, it got to the point where I, awakened from something very very traumatic and if you have ever had a dark night of the soul it is one of the most devastating times in your life it is like the darkest time um and you you just are at a very low vibration but things from that start uh, uplifting you you start uh receiving more messages and for me by going through that um, at this exact time, which I thought was very interesting, I was looking into spirituality. I don't know why I was just inclined to research about it. I had no idea what spirituality was at the time, like zero clue. Um, and I was also looking at solar weather at the same exact time. And I was putting all of these things together. And another thing during my dark night of the soul is, and, and I think this woke me up the most to the mission that I'm supposed to be on. And that was I've seen a documentary with Dr. Stephen Greer. And I've watched a lot of these documentaries before, but he really, uh, I tuned in at that time. And I, I started realizing these uh, high ranking military officials to coming out. And I, I turned to my fiance, I said, it's real. And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, it blew, completely blew my mind. And that also opened me up from this dark night of the soul. So I had many, multiple things going on at the same exact time um, as I was trying to bring myself out of this very dark place. And it kind of just came together. And to me, it was like epiphanies after epiphanies. And I started re receiving these downloads and these messages. And today, I don't know how I got here, but you're here I am. Uh, it was just uh, brought on to me that it was very important to speak about things that are coming up very quickly, mind you. Um, yes, and and I am uh, I'm quite amazed uh, about the easiness you are talking about the the weather, you know, solar flare, uh, uh, watching the the sun and what's going on with uh, with the sun. 
uh, and then talking about spirituality is a very uh, nice and smooth um, combination. And um, before the 2019, do you did you have a previous uh, life which you had to to shut off and start on this new path, or you are doing uh, them both in parallel? Uh, it it was definitely something that I shed. Um, not willingly. Let's just say that it was willingly. I was, um, I had an increase in a medication and I didn't realize the side effects of it until afterwards. And I was left with the destruction of everything. And that's what really put on my dark night of the soul. Cause I literally lost everything and I was no, in like zero control during that time. Um, So I, I don't yet again, I don't know if you've been through one, uh, but it's not it's not a, a great thing, but it is good because of where you are, like in the present moment, especially where I am. It's something that I now perceive as, okay. I had to do that to be able to get where I am now and understand the things that I do now. Yes, was it traumatic? Absolutely. Um, but was it necessary? Yes, it was. It was very necessary. Um, so So it's one of those things definitely line up in that aspect. And did you go through a period of, let's say, training to have your body adjust to certain codes and vibrations uh, or for you, which was much more smoother than for, for others? I think my transition was a little bit smoother um, because I've always kind of vibrated very high and I've always kind of stepped into my higher power and accepted that and didn't accept um, what other people would place me in a box of categories because uh, I'm not that I'm a whole bunch of stuff, you know? Um, so I think I definitely had a, a little bit of an easier time, but yet again, on that, when you're an empath, uh, it takes a toll on you emotionally Um, and that's where I struggled the most was with the emotional side and uh, trying to stabilize that and bring myself out of that as quickly as possible. Because I, I just at that moment knew that I wasn't where I, was, I should have been. Um, I wasn't the same person and I didn't like the feelings that I was getting during that specific time. And I'm powerful enough. And I knew this prior to even spirituality. I'm like, girl, you can do this. I'm like, oh, my, you're amazing. Just go for it. And I said, okay, I'm just clean slate. This is what it is. Okay. We're going to do this, this, and this to bring myself out of it. Um, and there, yet again, there's just many, many epiphanies when you line yourself up to a uh, higher frequency a lot a lot of things start happening um, to you and for you uh, so it's, it's very interesting yes and the, an important aspect of what you said is for those who are listening is that you have to accept what's going on and uh, mm -hmm. be open to these codes these downloads these new energies coming to to your body And if you can assess from the beginning that there is nothing wrong with you and you are not going crazy, as I discussed with my previous, uh, yes. previous guest, uh, Livia Devi, and again, she wasn't aware of anything spiritual, yoga, meditation, and suddenly she was just picked up to go on this path and spread the message. So if you open up and accept uh, what's going on to you, I think it will be much easier to go through this transition. Yeah. And you know what? I, I 100% agree with that. And that's one of the main things is being able to trust yourself. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people, mm, they get frustrated because they're not receiving maybe the same things that we are. And that's okay. That That's perfectly fine. Uh, sometimes it's just not meant for you. You're just most to, you're supposed to hear it from somebody else, basically. Um, but acceptance is a huge part of that. You need to be able to say, okay, this, that, and, you know, what is occurring is happening for an exact reason. You have to allow it to happen uh, and don't push against it because the more you're pushing against it, um, the worse things can really get because yet again, you get emotionally tied into it and it kind of psychs you out. 
um, and you and you're kind of pointing the fingers uh, at this made me do it, this made me do it, this made me do it. But really, you have to bring yourself inside and say, okay, what can I take uh, accountability for? Um, if my emotions went out this way, why, why is that? Okay, what can I do to prevent that in the future and then make the change that I need to make in order to realign myself? Um, and that's where that trust comes in. You really need to start trusting yourself and your abilities. And once you start opening that door, um, then a lot more things are going to start happening for you, you know? <laughs> yes. And then I think does maybe at the sense? beginning, yes, it does. And maybe at the beginning of the okay. process, if we don't trust ourselves, we're going to look for validation. But again, if yes. we look for validation from people who are not on the same wavelength like us uh, or on the same, on the spiritual path, they might put us down and say, look, you get, you're getting crazy. Please forget about this stuff. Nothing is happening to you. Take a cold shower and move on. But yeah, if we go to the right advice. people, then we can really uh, start trusting ourselves. Yes. And, and I also think that um, people who are more uh, evolved on their path, they've been through these for a longer period of time. I think that's a wonderful thing because we're able to help those people who are just awakening and have these questions because this is new to everybody. You know, we're all waking up to this uh, during this specific period of time. And thank God that, you know, people have been through these dark nights of the soul and have incorporated and trusted themselves in this spirituality and everything that is attached to it. Um, and we're able to help uh, those people open up and yet again, trust that they are doing exactly what they need to be doing. And then also uh, we, we kind of help them shed that ego uh, and do more of that shadow work because that's very, very important especially as you're trying to uh, raise your vibration. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Sir, I mentioned a, lit a list of uh, gifts and sensitivities uh, you have. Uh, do you have a favorite one or uh, you are uh, have more strength in, in one of them than the others? Um, yes, I would say I definitely have definitely more strengths um, because I have a very strong sense of just knowing um, and I've always kind of had that since I was younger. Uh, it's it's more of you can kind of read people's minds uh, and you can read energy uh, at the same time. Um, so when I, I hear a piece of knowledge, it's like, OK, I know I feel this feeling of truth there. So I don't really have to you know dive in too much in that because. I just know that's what it is. And it, it's really hard um, when people want like hard evidence. It's it's hard for me to, you know, provide that because I feel I just I just know. I just I don't know how to explain it. Um and then my other ability is being an empath. And I didn't quite understand this until um my spiritual awakening, what what I was going through. And I think a lot of us are understanding that now, um, the sensitivity to emotions and to energy, specifically, if you're very sensitive to energies, you can walk into a room and you can feel exactly, you know, the, the type of environment that you're walking into, or you're having a conversation and you can strongly pick up what this other person is feeling. And it's really, really difficult. I'm not going to say, I wish anybody to be an empath because it's not easy. It's really, really hard to put boundaries between yourself and another, especially if you are close to this person, um, because you can take on and bring back with you to your house the emotions that this person is shedding, whether it be extreme rage or uh, extreme depression. Th those are really hard things to uh, put that boundary up against. Um, I'm not the happiest about the empathic abilities that I have, but they are uh, really helpful in situations where I can 
now I can put up these boundaries, but I can also immerse myself in what these people are truly feeling because not, not only can I feel uh, their emotions, but I know what they're getting at. It's like, I'm a human lie detector, but I don't want to tell them. I don't want to tell them ever, you know, ever, ever. Um, but it's like, it's like that. And then I also have this clairvoyant sense. It's not that I, I can perceive, like, I, I don't really see past events or things like this, but I can perceive different timelines and, and there's multiple So, Oh my God, there, there's so many parallel universes. There's many, many timelines. I can see the, uh, more so of the future because I'm from my soul is mainly based from a future um, uh, time period. And I think a lot of the star seeds here would have the same um, connection to that because we don't understand like why we have to do things a certain way, why we have to have a nine to five job, why we have to pay bills when we're the only species living who didn't even shoot, you know, well, we chose to be here, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, chose to uh, go, just go through this terrible process in this 3D planet. It's just, we, we just know that it's not supposed to be like this. Things should be easy and you should be creative. And uh, it's, it's interesting being able to see these future events and kind of get excited because you know, that's where the path should lead. Um, and it, it, for me, it's very exciting because this is uh, an accelerated process right now. And we are breaking out of that mold. And you can see it in the present, present day right now, uh, not only on the news, even though it's controlled, uh, we're like new, uh, newspapers or things like that. But during uh, exposure, which is what we're doing right now, is this, uh, this small disclosure drip by drip. You can you can catch these glimpses of what's really happening behind the scenes if you're, you know, uh, consciously aware of maybe this, that and the other, you know. Yes, I yeah, totally agree with uh, what you said. And I'm glad that you mentioned that when you walk out of a room, you might uh, have certain energies clinging to um, to your uh, own um, body and your yes. own energies. And for those who are listening and they are not uh, aware that they are empaths or they have this type of sensitivities, uh, what would you recommend um, for them to protect themselves uh, from these undesired um, attachments? The, the best thing is honestly, yet again, not only trusting yourself and um, it, you need to learn how to place those boundaries in a very healthy way. Yes, some people put boundaries up, but it's kind of more in a destructive way where you're kind of like cocooning your energy. And that's, that's not exactly what you want to do, because that's going to create a lot of pressure on your energy points. If you're, you know, condensing yourself, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is uh, if you want to protect yourself is visualize this white source light uh, ener uh, energetically coming through your meridian points and through your energy chakra points and then being able to clear that out. So you can kind of move a little bit easier, um, but it does, it takes a lot of time and especially it takes a lot of time because you have to process what is your own emotions and what is somebody else's emotions. And I think that's what takes a lot of time is recognizing. So um, what I do uh, is I don't like going out in public. I don't think any of the star seeds like going out in public, but we have to, right? Um, so when we, when you go out in public and you're having maybe a good conversation with somebody, um, try to pick up how they're feeling first. Okay. We're having a conversation. I feel their energy is very calming. They seem very, very happy. Um, but you, of course you can do this with somebody who is negatively thinking as well, but just put yourself at a distance and kind of observe. That's what you want to be an observer more than you want to dive in and fix things, you know? Um, so that, that would be definitely the best information that I would give somebody is to start 
observing and uh trying to separate your emotions from the other person's yet again this is a very slow process we're all kind of going through this now um especially those yet again who are sensitive to these energies but it does it be patient be patient with yourself it's yeah. not going to happen right off the bat it may take months years um it, it's a long process yeah. So in other words, engage in the conversation, but don't engage emotionally if possible. And that will yes, keep you in the observant um, state of mind. Yes. And, and that's basically uh, that's basically the key of being an empath and starting to understand your abilities um, and what I kind of mean, because taking on somebody's energy can really take a toll on yourself. and. Uh, a lot of people are unconscious about, you know, why am I feeling so angry or why do I feel depressive and overwhelmed at times? But yet again, being an empath is not it's not easy, um, especially especially when you have this uh, these solar rays coming in because we're also collectively purging. So out of nowhere, you might feel this bout of depression and sadness or this happiness um, just because you, some, not all, some star seeds are able to collectively purge and help humanity through that way as being a pillar of light, especially when these solar cosmic rays start coming in. So that, also plays a part on <laughs> yes we'll talk about those as well but i want to touch on the light uh, activation codes do uh, or, or all the star are the, only the star seeds being affected by uh, these uh, codes or everyone no, else on the planet it's it's everybody everybody is collectively mm -hmm. being um upgraded literally <laughs> um and it yet again it's only if you're aware of this or not if you're not aware you know, of any type of energy that is coming in, then you're not keeping track of how you're feeling or the symptoms that you're having. You're just, you know, going along with it. You're like, oh, I feel terrible today. You know, scratch that off the list, whatever. And you just continue going through your path. But those people who are aware of these type of symptoms um, that go along with this uh, solar radiation, they're able to kind of discern a lot of things more. And what I try to do um, every day is to give you an update on the type of energy that is coming in and how to best prepare yourself, especially, you know, day by day, um, because we can't predict solar, you know, weather, um, but how to protect your energy and what you may feel along uh, that day or the energy of the month, uh, as plus the planetary alignments have a lot to do with that as well. Um, but yes. So are we approaching the, the solar minimum uh, these uh, days? We are approaching the solar maximum. Maximum, yes. Um, okay. Yes. <clears throat> this is going to be the peak. It was supposed to be in 2025. We have been feeling an increase and we have been asking for an increase in this timeline and we're presented with it. I just did a video on my TikTok of um, it was another uh, a news article about the solar maximum being pushed up to January of, you know, next month. Um, and I found that very interesting that the the peak is. Um, being processed a lot faster, but it does make sense because we are getting a lot of active, active sunspots. Um, what that means is, you know, say this is the sun. We have three distinct areas that we can have these uh, sunspot regions, usually up on the, the upper level during the mid and right on the edge. And when we have a very large group of them appear within, you know, less than 24 hours, that is an indication that the magnetic field of the uh, sun is becoming a lot more active. And with that, it starts opening these pockets on the sun of like this highly magne magnetized plasma and it pushes it out. That's where that pressure um, <clears throat> and the density and the temperature and the velocity of all that is ejected. 
And uh, that's that's basically what we're looking for is this plasma. But we're not the only planet affected also by these uh, coronal mass ejections um, from the sun. But we are headed into the maximum now. And I think the majority of us can feel this as well. And it is also being broadcast yet again through uh, news articles and the media. So it's just another indication and validation, at least for me, that, that uh, we're on the right track. And but there know, are a lot of hidden agendas, I will say that. Yes. And knowing that the CME and the solar flare can wipe out the electrical grid uh, anywhere on the planet, how yes. do you prepare for going back to old way of living? I don't think it's going to be a very long amount of time because we do have this higher technology that is going to start incorporating itself. And the grid needs to go down for very specific reasons, not even a correlated to the sun or anything. They need to go down for not only the darker entities to be expelled, because once we have these solar flares and more and more light comes in, they can no longer be here. And that's going to be the go time is when everything is shut down, they're going to be able to have this amount of time. And it's not going to be a very large amount of time. Um, yet again, I read on a lot of timelines, I keep getting three months. I don't know why. Three months keeps popping into my head. But yet again, it's really hard to um, discern which timeline that is on because we do have a timeline where an EMP from our government is going to happen. Um, we also have an occurrence of the natural effect, uh, the cyclical uh, cycle that is going to be happening. But the best way to prepare is, you know, just allow this to happen be aware it's not going to be the end of the world. So you really need to keep your emotions in check because everybody else is going to be freaking out. They're not going to understand what is going to happen. Um, and I've been telling a lot of my viewers, I, I'm not a survivalist, uh, but I do have supplies on hand just in case, you know, we had COVID. So it's like, it's good to prepare. I think that was a good preparation for everybody to have something on hand, whether it's medical, you know, or not. Um, but clean water, uh, two-way radios, not saying that they will work because there is a lot of satellites that will be disrupted and will be crushed. Um, and this happens quite often when we have larger solar flares, mind you. Um, but it, it is very important that during this time, you really keep your emotions in check. People are going to be starting to look towards somebody who understands and kind of knows what's going on because the majority of humans will not know what's going on. It's going to kind of be like a, a blindsided effect, you know, and, and yet again, a lot of people are being co coerced from uh, the government. Basically, Klaus Schwab was saying, you know, you get ready for an internet apocalypse, get ready for this uh, EMP. And so yet again, this is another validation that these timelines are occurring all at the same time. Uh, and it's, it's a little concerning because we can't exactly pinpoint when this is going to happen. Um, but I do get this feeling that August, September, October, between that range is going to be very significant and something very, very big is going to happen during that time. And to me, it makes sense because that's when elections are. So yes. that makes sense to me. Um, and I know that we have this uh, uh, project Bluebeam. And I think, in my knowledge, I think a lot of people are aware of this. And I think awareness can shut this down quickly. Um, because that's that's not the timeline we need to be on because we understand that these um, benevolent light beings are coming here to assist humanity rather than destroy it, which is basically the globalist agenda. Um, but this year is going to be very significant. Yes, thank you for sharing. And also, you know, when uh, Schwab is mentioning that another pandemic will happen or a cyber attack will happen, I look at right. it from a point of view that he loves us so much that he tells us in advance what's going to happen to us so we get prepared. Yes, and I, I think that's also what's going to start happening is, I mean, they, they technically have to tell us, um, usually through 
movies, you know, music, celebrities, entertainment is how they have to get it out. Uh, but I think a lot of people are not trusting the government anymore because a lot of things are happening and a lot of information is coming forth. Um, so I understand that as well, because there is a very dark agenda that is at play yet again at the very same time. Um, and you'll be seeing and we have already seen a lot of these higher elitists being um, reprimanded. Uh, and uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> yes. Very and good. Sarah, you mentioned technologies. And uh, of course, only someone like the... Um, uh, Acturians or the Pleiadians uh, can, or, or Syrians can bring such technologies to, to us. And we know that if they put such technologies in the hands of existing governments, they won't be used in our own favor. Um, how do you see these technologies being used uh, or brought to the masses in order to be protected from um, those who don't have good intentions? Well, what I, what I see and I perceive happening is that there is going to and, and mind you that we already have all of these technologies we have them and we've had them for a very long time almost an embarrassment amount of time um so what i think is going to happen is that the extraterrestrials are going to come down you know, it's just an amount of time. It's going to be between 2027, 2028. These are very big times that things are going to start happening. Um, but we're going to already have these technologies and they're going to help other people understand how to use these productively for humanity itself. They're going to be in the right hands this time and they're going to be rolled out like the, this medic tech med bed technology is going to be one of the first things that is going to come out. And this is a light frequency vibration that can literally reconstruct your DNA down to the point where, you know, you never had a disease ever. Uh, and this can happen within minutes. You know, there's an, there could be an 80 year old man and within a couple minutes, he'll be back to his 30s. And this is technology yet again that we have. We have the ability to produce limbs. We have the ability uh, for people to get eyesight back. Uh, cancer would be eradicated. You know, it. yet again, we have these technologies and that's what's the most frustrating part. But they're going to teach us how to use these efficiently and to the betterment of the evolution of humans on this planet. Um, and especially with zero point free energy, I think there's going to be a lot of things that come from that within a single generation. Everything is going to change within a single generation. That's how quickly they're going to start put, pushing these things out. But right now it's tiptoe effect until the proper time is what I, I keep getting told. You know, we can't predict exactly when this is going to occur, but we just know that it's happening yet again at an accelerated pace. And it's something to look forward to um, in the future, for sure. Yeah, th yeah. this is That's what wonderful. I yeah, this is wonderful news. And, uh, you know, the discussion yes. can um, snowball into a much deeper um, conversation, because let's say we get healed, that means we're going to live longer. Uh, but if we have these uh, free uh, energy technologies, that means we don't have to um, dig for uh, raw materials to create, uh, you know, phones or anything else that we use in our daily life. That means mm -hmm. Mother it's Earth like can, you know, recycle, rebound herself. And does right. it mean that also we still have to keep a specific number of people alive on Earth at any given time or that at that point it doesn't matter? At that point, it doesn't really matter um, because we, we do have quite a bit of land and land that has not been occupied. Uh, we have land above. We have land below. You know, uh, we have the choice in the future if we want to explore, you know, uh, space and things like that. You know, we can't go through the past the ether net right now, but there are portal systems where, you know, we do come in and out of that. Um, but you're right about the uh, 
we're going to be able to stop this, uh, the raw natural resources that we're ruining the planet for because they're just, it's silly. You know, it, we don't even need that. Uh, everybody is going to be a, accounted for, you know, there's going to be no poverty. Everybody is going to help shel shelter, you know, there there's in the future, not right now, but in the future, future, um, there's going to be zero need for any type of monetary, you know, aspect at all. Um, you're just going to be able to lit. You don't, you don't have to like, uh, do a nine to five job. It's going to be more of humans are going to be able to do something creative because that's why humans are here. We're a very creative being mixed with all of these extraterrestrial races. So we have many, many abilities. It's just, we're, you know, excluded from that information, uh, yet again, but it's going to be a whole different world in the future. And I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I, I'm excited. I mean, I, I can see this. Yeah. I'm you excited. Know, it's, it's I feel really... like the age to, I'm young enough, in my opinion, to see all these changes, to go through all these changes and yeah. uh, um, get happy with, uh, you know, be part of, uh, of nature again and uh, Mother Earth rebouncing and all these new technologies. That would be amazing. Yes. And it, the, the best thing about this is that there's going to be a very big sense of oneness, especially as extraterrestrial disclosure happens, because the information that we are technically them is going to send, uh, sink in and settle into humans. They're going to be they're going to start remembering, OK, well, if my soul resides here, where else have I been? Uh, what else have I had? And I think yet again, the star seeds that are awakened right now, we have the opportunity uh, to dive into this so we can help those people who are, are going to win later to this. Um, it is very exciting. This oneness is going to completely change the world. It's very, it's a very big, big deal in the consciousness levels of humanity because we can raise up to a, a level four, and that that's a big deal. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but it's a big deal. Um, but yet again, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future, and you're looking forward to it. So that's really good that you know you're aware of this as well. So I can I can see it. You just radiate it off. <laughs> Radiating. Thank you. So will this new level of consciousness uh, eradicate, eradicate the uh, religion and the constraints of our thinking we have right now? Yes, absolutely. Religion will never be the same. All the religions right now, they, they're literally the same exact thing merged together, but they've been spread apart like they're separate and they're not. Uh, and that yet again, this goes back down to this information being hidden from us forever. You know, the Roman Empire hid it, the British Empire hid it, now our government hides it. And yet again, it's an embarrassing time that we haven't been told these things that can completely change the course of humanity. Um, and we're going to be able to, and we are now starting to uncover what the act truth of like the pyramids and Stonehenge and all these coral, you Bermuda Triangle, the Alaskan Triangle. Like it is mind blowing how large of a conspiracy and a cover up this is. It's compartmentalized, like you wouldn't even believe. Um, and it is, it's going to change religion and it's going to take a little bit of time because people are really stuck on the dogma, you know, of, you know, it's this way and, you know, it, it can't be any other way. But when they're presented with the actual facts, and um, unfortunately, they want to hear this from our government, um, instead of doing the research themselves, but whatever, it doesn't matter because it will come out through them. Um, it's just going to be at a later date. Um, but yes, it's going to change it completely, all religions completely. It's going to, it's going to be a oneness, like I said, uh, it's, I don't want to like put the word out of like one world governments and like one world nation, because there's a really big, bad stigma behind that. Yeah. But that's technically what it's going to be is that everybody is going to be made aware of all of this information and it's going to make sense. Um, 
And I think that's going to change the route of humans as well. I think that's a big, big part of it in raising the consciousness level. Exactly. And we can have a one world government with a high level of consciousness and awareness. That's for sure. Yes. But not at this level we are at right now. That is right. Not a sudden totalitarian death. type deal, yeah. you know, a control. It's, it's, it's going to be completely opposite, but they're really trying to throw things at you, keep you in that 3D mindset right now. And that's where it's very confusing for people uh, because there is a lot of anger towards certain things. And, you know, that, I mean, it makes sense. Of course, you're going to be angry, um, but it does prevent you from seeing and accepting other things uh, because they want you to focus on the worst. Uh, instead of what is really going to be the best, you know, uh, but it is going to be perceived that way at first, for sure, uh, because people aren't willing or wanting to change everything they've ever thought of, you know, that seems like too much for them. So they, they kind of throw it aside, like, oh, I don't want to think about that. Oh, my God, could you imagine? Um, but we, we've all kind of had to accept it ourselves. And that's going to be in the future. Uh, we just, yet again, patience. <laughs> patience. Yes, and I talked to a lot of people who uh, used to believe that, you know, the governments are wonderful and they do everything to, to protect us. And in the end, COVID was a blessing in disguise because they realized that these guys are uh, tyrants and they don't uh, love us. They don't want to take care of us. They want to, supp to suppress us. Uh, and I don't think they would have uh, waken up to, uh, to this type of behavior if the smooth, calm uh, approach and interaction with uh, the government and powers to be would have continued. So in right. a way, it was harsh on us, which were already awakened and we didn't want to comply and obey. But it uh, woken up a lot of uh, an important percentage of the population. Yeah, and that's what it was. I think 2020 was a big wake up for a lot of people. I wasn't a part of that. I wake, woke up before that. And it was really interesting to watch everybody else. And I think a, a lot that brought that on as well is nobody was working. And they got this essential break where they relaxed. I mean, yes, they were scared of catching COVID, but they relaxed. They were able to you know, take a breath and then be with family, um, even though they're secluded to their own house. <laughs> but I think that also woke a lot of people up. Like, why am I working a nine to five when I, you know, it, it doesn't matter. That's not what matters right now. People were scared for their lives and their families' lives. And that brought a really large realization of what was really important. Money's not important, you know. Uh, it, it was the it was the family aspect, and then being able to have that very large break that adults usually don't have. Children get it in school, you know, they get summer break and things like that. Um, but adults don't really get that, and when they had that, I think that gave them a little bit of a taste of, you know, I wish we had this all the time. You know, that would be one <laughs> wonderful. Yes, Sarah, I would like to turn to a favorite subject of yours. You are a mother. And I want to know if you can share, of course, who is the soul you gave uh, birth to? And have you had any information about his soul prior to giving birth? I have not. I haven't had any memories from him pop up. He's still very, very young. Uh, he's only a year and a half. Um, he's starting to talk and I'm so excited uh, about that because I have so much to tell him, you know, everybody's telling me, you know, he's going to go through a, a phase where he's going to ask why. And I'm like, I am so excited for that phase because I'm going to blow his mind. <laughs> but I, I'm also very excited for when we have these conversations, I can, you know, ask him about, uh, where he has been, what he remembers, because children are so tied into source. They're brand new. They haven't, you know, been been tampered with. Um, 
And I, th I think that's really important. And I think this is going to be a big future thing. And I've, I've noticed that with other content creators that are starting to ask their children these very important questions. Um, and, and that's a big deal. And I can't wait for that. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, and but they're yeah, asking he, them live. Like, some, some content creators are asking their children live on Instagram what they think about this or that, about the soul, about yeah. the evolution about consciousness and it's a very interesting uh, discussion interaction right, yes. because they it, they're completely aligned already you know their complete source mm -hmm. light themselves they have access to the akashic records you know um it's so interesting to see children going going through uh the pr the process of their parents understanding and, and I think that that is so exciting. And I love to see these children, you know, talking about this uh, yet again, because it gives me validation that I, what I'm talking about is right. So, so I, I love I love kids, period. Kids are amazing. Uh, and they they tell you the truth and they're very genuine and they're very full of love. And I think that's also why they're very, you know, connected and they want to help adults understand. Yes. Um, and they're going to be a, a big part. They're going to be the leaders, this alpha generation, especially, uh, which my little man is part of. Uh, mm -hmm. So the alpha generation is really going to change things. But yet again, within a whole generation, things are going to start changing, especially with the zero point free energy and these medbed technologies. And then the information, not only from the extraterrestrials, but the the children themselves are going to be brought up and taught a lot of different things. Uh, the truth, basically, they're going to be taught the truth. Uh, and that's going to accelerate yet again uh human evolution <laughs> yes i mean i recently came back from uh, a trip to eastern europe and uh, when i met uh, young parents with uh, children young like two or three years old uh, i started telling them please watch your children or and ask them if they have imaginary friends and encourage uh this this uh, facet of, of their character because uh, this is who they are, and they they have to keep this connection with these imaginary friends because yeah. they will help him throughout his or her life. They look at me sometimes as I had two heads, but I said, I don't care. Just watch them. Yes, and that that's the truth, especially what you said with the imaginary friends. You know, they can perceive uh, different light spectrums and different energies than opposed as uh, you know than opposes us. Um, it's kind of like cats, you know, how cats, can, they can emit a different frequency and they can see different lights, you know, ultraviolet light and things like that. Uh, and that's kind of how children work as well. Uh, they can perceive these energies. They can have this conversation, these conversations, uh, and it's normal. Or, you know, when people are passing, uh, they experience the same exact thing. They see people, they talk to people, uh, they're transported out of their bodies and they're, you know, they come, they come back. Uh, until they're ready to pass along, but they are experiencing almost the same exact things. Um, it's very interesting, very interesting. Lots of things are being brought into light, you know. Yes. Very, very exciting times. Sarah, I know that a lot of star seeds say that they are ambassador of the Galactic Federation, and you are one of them. Uh, was there a congregation, a gathering of such souls to meet uh, each other and uh, do all of you have the same mission or differs from a star seed to star seed? Well, we all have different missions. Not everybody is meant to step into the, like the light, you know, the limelight. I didn't want to be one of them, but I was forced. To, I feel like I was forced to, um, but not everybody has the same exact mission. Some people are just here to be themselves and they need to step into that and find their passions and their joys. And that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to vibrate as high as possible and be bring in as much light as possible. They're, some of their uh, missions is to anchor and uh, to stabilize these ley lines in this new grid that we're building because the, the 3D matrix etheric field is falling. You know, and that's good. That's a good thing. Um, but we are stabilizing this new grid. We are stabilizing these polar regions for a specific region uh, reason. Um, but yeah, star star seeds. Their missions are all different. Everybody is different. We're spread out on purpose, um, and it's wonderful that we have you know social media that we can finally meet up and we realize that we're not crazy. That other thousands 
of people are experiencing the same exact thing. Thousands of people are getting the same exact messages. Um, and it, it's just, you know, you can't deny that <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no denying the, um, the different things that we're all experiencing, but they all correlate together yet again. Uh, it's very, um, eye opening. Yes. And I'm sure that uh, certain people in the, the governments, um, are aware of what's going on. Uh, but the fact yes. that there are so many stars is so many people awakening, um, it's very hard for them to pinpoint one or two and, you know, take them out, plug them out from their, uh, uh, homes and take them to a lab and study them because it's an infinite, almost an infinite, uh, um, array of people coming out so they cannot corral all of them and there is no point in taking only one or two so they have to um, continue the manipulation and uh, through media and other means in order to keep people right. of low uh, frequency mm -hmm. yeah you're absolutely that's exactly what the agenda is um, but we're we're very stable right now i noticed the star seeds are very stable um, and the ones that are awakening are becoming more stable because of the stability of the other ones, you know, uh, because we're, we're reassuring them that yet again, they are not crazy. The things that they are experiencing are very, very normal. In fact, they have been through this process many, many times in different galaxies and things like that. We're just here to assist humanity through this one and to stabilize the grid. Uh, and bring as much light as possible, especially during this time, because we are passing through this photon belt where more and more light is coming in. We just need to incorporate that light that we are used to um, having. And, uh, you know, this is just a universal cycle and it happens in every single galaxy. Yet again, we've been through this process, but right now we're here to yet again, stabilize this type of frequency here. And we're very comfortable in this frequency because yet again, we've been there. <laughs> we, we talk about uh, 3D, 4D. What is your perception of 5D? Uh, 5D is basically, okay, so there's a 5D consciousness level that you can reach, but 5D is non-physical. It's a light being, this light body. You know, that's that's basically what they saw when uh, Christ came back. Mm -hmm. You know, he was light. Uh, he had this halo around. He was an aura. He was a light body, and he was able to condense himself enough to come down into the 3D level at that time because we uh he and we entered the age of Aquarius which we are now and that's when more and more light came in that's when we had the last photon belt uh cycle you know so the 5D is more of we're going to be tapping into that consciousness because we're not going to die. They need our physical bodies to reconstruct themselves for uh, the progression of humanity and the evolution. So they're not going to we're not going to die. A lot of people think we're going to die. It's not going to happen like that. Uh, we need to tap into the 5D consciousness. So we are able in this solar system in another point of time to transition into that. Um, and we'll become more of these light beings. But right now we're just tapping into that consciousness uh, of a higher level, that love frequency and things like that. That's that gamma rays that are coming in. You know, it, it taps us into insight and uh, like peak experiences and synchronicities and things like that. Um, but 5D is going to be wonderful. Most of us are in that 4D level. We've kind of came out of the destruction and the despair of 3D. We don't like uh, and don't function very well in that type of energy. So we're transitioning into something different. And a lot of uh, the star seeds are stuck in this 4D, which isn't a bad thing. It's just they're they're understanding more of the awareness of everything and how they have the power to step out of one thing and bring themselves into something. And that's going to be the new norm. That's going to be their foundation. They're transferring their foundation from something that was very rocky and unstable into something that is definitely more stable. And then eventually they can move onto the 5D consciousness of um, kind of, if, if you've ever 
had a friend or met somebody who's just the nicest person in the world. They just had everything wonderful to say. They lifted you up. They had this beautiful, you know, presence around them. You could never say one thing wrong about them. That's what we're getting towards. That's what we need to have. We're we're gonna be those people. <laughs> And, and talking Does that make about, sense? I don't yeah, and, and talking <laughs> about transition and, you know, manifestation and quantum physics, are you saying that those who are awake and they uh, manifest uh, on this timeline, uh, fourth and fifth uh, dimensional vibration and consciousness uh, will detach themselves from the timeline of like a 3D, 3D timeline where people will still be stuck in their 3D mentality? Yes, that's exactly what's going to happen. And the elitists know this is going to happen. And that's why they have all these underground bunkers, because it's not to protect, you know, um, it, it's more of a protection for themselves because they can't handle light. They literally cannot handle the light. So that's why you see in the mainstream media, all these people building underground bunkers because they know. Um, but for us, it's going to be a whole different experience. Um, and they are going to drop that 3D timeline. The 3D timeline has a very, like there's a time limit on it. And they're yet again, trying to promote as much fear as they can to keep people in that 3D uh, awareness. What they want and they need to siphon this energy off these people because that's their life force and so yet again they're trying to drag as many people with them as possible because yet again that's their food source uh but we uh the majority of the planet is going to awaken the, the large large majority of them are and they are going to be transitioning out of that 3D aspect and out of that 3D timeline where they experience uh, that nuclear war uh, in that false flag alien invasion, you know, Project Blue Bean and things like that. But we are really trying right now to yet again stabilize this grid so people are able to match that and come up to it and stay on that other timeline. Uh, that's the main mission right now to uh, exclude ourselves from something that is very destructive and bring as many people as we can with us. Uh, does that, I don't know if that makes sense. I probably sound weird. Easy peasy. That's all I can say. <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> Sarah, such a lovely conversation. How can people uh, contact you if they want to have a session with you or find out more about uh, uh, what you are doing? Um, if they do want to contact me, my main page is through my TikTok. I am branching out into other locations. I will uh, have eventually my own website. I am working on that um, in different platforms. So what I have is a link tree and I have very many, many different types of sessions that are avail available. Um, and I do have lots of direct messages that people can email me. A lot of people are asking for um, just information and I give it out freely, you know, because people need help and that's okay. But I do offer a lot of different types of sessions for people who need answers um, and need uh, clearings and alignments and things like that. I'm, I'm here to provide answers and to provide information for people to set them up correctly on their path and their mission. So if they do want to contact me, email is wonderful. My link tree is probably the best bet or to direct message me through my TikTok channel or through my YouTube, which is new. So um, and my Instagram, of course. Uh, but those are the three platforms that I am starting out on. But TikTok is my main one right now. Thank I'm you. Transitioning. We'll list, yeah, we'll list all of them in the description of the, the video. So now that we are approaching uh, the end of the interview, any final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts and my final um, message, basically, to all of the star seeds is to continue on their, your path. We are so close to it. Um, the solar weather is going to really amplify this. And I caution you to make the best decisions and the most productive decisions. And I understand that there's a lot of emotions that come up during this time, but we don't want to create destruction with these emotions. And I think that's a really big main thing 
uh, that when you're on a spiritual awakening that you stay away from. That's what a lot of people don't talk about that, but it's really important that you transition in a very healthy and a very smooth way. Yes. Thank you very much for all your uh, guidance and advice. And uh, thank you for everything uh, you are doing. And hopefully more yes. and more people will uh, will listen to, to your message. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And uh, for my viewers, to my viewers, please, um, again, share this uh, video. Visit uh, my website, claudiumurgan.com or spiritualinspired.ca. Uh, um, get a free copy of my book when you visit uh, these websites. And until next time, love and gratitude.